Hi, it's Bridget, and welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. It's my pleasure to be able to connect with you through this unique podcast format. I hope you enjoy the topic today is actually called disruption. Disruption. I'm often inspired by the things that come through in my day-to-day life, in my conversations with my loved ones and family, and also with you in my private intuitive sessions. So thank you for the inspiration and the opportunities to continue to grow and expand, and most importantly, to receive. Because that's kind of the point, y'all, is to receive. All right, so disruption, let's talk about that. Disruption, what does that mean? Ooh, I feel a journal prompt opportunity come on. If you haven't, as of yet, purchased a journal, get one. There will be links below to some of my favorites. You know that I adore the Peter Popper Press. Not sponsored yet. And currently I'm using my Cherry Blossom Journal for the spring of 2022. So, disruption, what does that mean for you? When you hear the word disrupt, disruption, disruption, right away for me, I go back to the classroom to think about education, not only as a student, but also as someone who has worked in education. You may or may not know this about me, but I uh, danced around the idea of becoming a teacher um, a few years ago, about five years ago, trying to pursue a potential dream that I had, an unanswered question about whether or not I should and would enjoy being a teacher. And it was focused primarily on early childhood education, particularly early childhood special education. So the concept of disruption brings me to a classroom setting where I myself, having four children, have had children who have been the disruption of the group, the disruption of whatever the setting is that you're in, like such here with education, being the disruption. This is a potential label, a feeling of being targeted, a feeling of being not worthy, not enough, a feeling of being called out, a feeling of amplification of the misfit, I don't fit in, I'm different than others, and not in good ways. The concept of disruption through this educational example that I'm giving you made me want to, as a parent, when I had a child early on, many years ago now, that was entered into some special education programs because of the behavioral aspects or components of life and how they were challenging for this child in particular, and with the resistance pieces within, within the, their makeup as a human, right? Which we all have. But working with that, navigating that, the energy of disruption, that, that behavioral component of it is a place to be put in where you can see the contrast of what the expectations are, the standards, the performance requirements of humanity, society to fit into this particular model, which the example I'm using, again, education, and thinking like elementary school, okay? In classroom, there can be lots of disruption. There can be lots of challenging noises, auditory influences, visual stimulation and cues, and also other children, other competing needs. While at the same time, a facilitator, a leader, a teacher trying to manage the group, sometimes with helpers, teacher assistants, special ed assistants, etc., creates an environment where there are many things happening at once, lots of things occurring at once. And for someone who is very in tune to energetic flow of things would be over sensory and acutely aware of all of the things coming at them at once. Kind of like driving down a dark road in the middle of nowhere at night and with the windshield getting splattered by bugs like that making it difficult to see and very uncomfortable to hear. The disruption, however, 
when it is identified as an individual, a person who is a problem, creates a whole host of energy around this concept or topic. When the truth is for that particular person, it's all about the perspective of disruption. The disruption may very well have been all of these piling up things that have created the sensory system of that particular human to be overloaded to the point of needing to request in a sense of urgency, whether by behavior, without words, or with loudness, I need help. But it doesn't come out that way. When there's a disruption, it comes out as an intensity of either disconnecting, going within, refusal, the perception of refusal to participate or engage or work because they are just so overloaded that they have to shut down or the extreme fight mechanism of get me out of here now. And the best way to do that is to run to the door or to throw your books or to do whatever you have to do to get yourself out of your body and that situation. Thus creating a disruption, a rippling effect to all the other students, all the other human beings that are in their bodies at that particular moment in time. Also then feeling the disruption of the ripple of that one sweet soul who could not take the stimulation any longer or the expectation of humanity in that particular environment. Am I being dramatic? Yes. Is this to prove a point? Yes. Disruption. And a setting created for learning. This scenario is exactly the way life is for you and for me. But we have learned. We have learned ways to manage, to cope. Some of those ways we manage and cope are completely unhealthy for us. Whether it has created the people-pleasing ability to read others and then adjust our personal needs, hide them shove them down, swallow our feelings in order to be able to adapt, to get the approval through pleasing others. A temporary sense of contentment that we might feel because of the comfort of those around us or the approval of those around us, a a, a momentary feeling good boost of energy quickly turns into a questioning of why that feeling doesn't last or why I still feel icky or bad or not quite enough. And then we look outwards and see not only judgment, but potentially competition, comparison in ways that we don't need to. Stories created by our mind to help keep us in tow, in line, and functioning as a highly productive member of society, which is required then to have approval of others. And so we would naturally seek that out because that is what is rewarded in the systems that we're in and the relationships that we're in as well. Not just formalized structures of school or work, but in our families, in our community, in our personal social groups. Now, this is not bad. That's not the intent of this dramatic description. It's just intended to really push forward for you this awareness of how, as a human being, the scenario of this classroom plays out because we are in a classroom. We are all humans. We have bodies. We have brains. Guess what? We also have hearts and spirits and your spirit is connected to your heart and they are allies. They are powerful partners. They are the dynamic duo of heart and soul and the dynamic duo of heart and soul. Guess what? Intuition and feelings. Oh, yes. I am telling you this now if you don't know it yet. Are closely tied working together They are on each other's sides. They are the ride or die. So your intuition will work with your feelings and emotions to help get you to do something different, to recognize something that's a problem, to adjust your behavior patterns to get your needs met. Not because you are selfish, not because you are a big jerk and trying to get attention in your classroom of life or in your relationship, but you have these Things that show up as coping mechanisms to help support your heart and your soul to be able to function in a human format through your body and your mind. And now, hello, newsflash, the body is highly intuitive if you haven't figured that out already, which is why there's a lot of teaching about dis-ease and body awareness and recognition of body consciousness 
in the conversations that you see on social media of body shaming, body dysmorphia, body positivity. This is about the body, not just the physical body, but the embodiment of the soul working through the body now because the bo- the the soul is not that effective with the mind, the brain. It really does argue with the brain. It's a constant tug of war. And the soul's not trying to argue with the brain. It's trying to support the brain, love the brain, but the brain has a mission to keep you alive at all costs, which create other types of coping mechanisms to tamp down the emotions which are closely connected in trying to flow and move and clear energy with your spirit. And so the mind would make emotions quickly categorized into good or bad. And the way in which you would cope with trying to hold back the bad would be to develop characteristics, traits, and behaviors to vices, to balance where you feel like you have a lack or incapacity, you are not capable, you are not competent to handle yourself. And what is handling yourself? The emotions that you feel. Emotions are so powerful and so incredibly filled with information about us and how we are responding and reacting to the environment and to the unseen. We've got to acknowledge this incredible feature of our life that brings us so much information. Truly, yes, I know sometimes on overload because the mind can only process things so quickly, but it's a good thing the body can process things very, very well. It detoxes, it gets you sick, it gives you headaches to recognize stress, it gives you stomach aches when you're nervous or anxious, whether it's a good anxious or a bad anxious. It gives you so much information. It is really in close alignment now. At this time, we are at in our lives in close alignment now with the spirit. Your spirit and your body are so developing a very intimate relationship. And I know this because I have been on this journey myself. And I feel it myself. As a, as a psychic, I've been a psychic for 18 years, for God's sakes. This body oracle, this body psychic intuitive piece has come up so strongly for me in the last year that I know, I know this is a thing. This is the next level of your spiritual advancement. This is the next level of your healing. This is the next level of your personal development as a human. You want to be happier? Bring that body in. Let it be part of the conversation and not the bad guy or the one sitting out. So the information you're getting in your body can create dis-ease over time. It can create physical illness so that you are forced into a status of self-love, of self-care, of extreme self-care. Do not go into the extreme home makeover version of self-care by having to deal with a body ailment or an injury just so you can get some rest. Just so you can slow down the overstimulation that you're getting from whatever relationship or environment or expectation overload that you're in. And guess what? It's not just about what's happening today. It's about what's happened in the past that's reminding you. What is happening today is reminding you of what happened in the past. Do not go back there. Do not stop going back. The responses you have, the vices you've created, the behavior patterns you have, whether it be biting your fingernails, whether it be avoiding something, whether it be caffeinating yourself. I am so good at that. Let me just raise my hand, which we all know I have enough energy. I don't need three cups of coffee in a day. But what? What? Do I do that? Oh, yes. And now we've been adding sugar to that. Yes, we have. Yes, yes, we have. Because that is a feel-good coping mechanism for me. And I recognize it and I understand it. But there are far worse things that we can develop in order to be a buffer which creates additional resistance to actually addressing the information that's coming through and course correcting before it gets to be a bigger problem, we numb it. We numb it. And numbing your body only goes so far because you need that body. You need it. You truly need it now. So the disruptions that are occurring While they clearly could be blamed on our emotions or clearly understood by psychoanalyzing our thoughts and our emotions and and getting lost in the psychology conversation we can have about thoughts and feelings and who influences what, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, and and new technologies to, to adapt or address stress like 
like things like um, acupuncture, which isn't new technology. Okay, I get that. But acupuncture or or um, EFT tapping or different other unique like uh, rapid eye movement therapies or whatever that light therapy or whatever it might look like for you. It could be old school like sweat lodge stuff or something different that um, I'm not aware of at this point. But what it's getting at is the ability to flow with the energy that's showing up so that there isn't this stop, go, stop, go. The disruption comes in the interruption of a flow. That's what disruption is. And the disruption shows up by the way that we choose to not just interpret the information, but to express or keep it away. The disruption happens when we try to stop a natural flow from happening. When we try to stop the flow of energy and we misunderstand it, we feel overwhelmed by it instead of recognize that it's picking up on momentum because we got to address it. Addressing energy doesn't mean stopping it. It means stepping in And using your power to align with what works and fits for you, what range of that spectrum fits for you, which line, which notes of the song are you going to sing? Because there's harmonization that can occur here. Find that. And that is your way. Disruption isn't bad. Sometimes it does create a halting energy that will stop us in our tracks because it's going to prevent us from something that could be very traumatic or hurtful to us or others. So disruption is not a bad thing. And it could be an event, an action, a triggering thing, which is what it feels like to me, a triggering event. But the truth of the matter is it has been bubbling up all along and it could be literally the straw that broke the camel's back is what results in a disruption, whether it be energetic or something very real and tangible like the student in a classroom that is overwhelmed and cannot handle the sensory inputs. Either way, either way, it's information. Either way, we have not been allowing ourselves to find the ray of that spectrum of energy flow that works for us. We cannot expect the energy to itself change, but our job is to harmonize it. So to work with disruption is to soften the resistance by harmonizing our energy and finding ways that work for us, like less caffeine, perhaps. Otherwise, you will end up in a cycle or pattern of addictive behaviors, of things that will create a numbing or avoidance to support the what is perceived as the release of or getting out of what is uncomfortable, the discomfort. Because the disruption is really what is showing you the discomfort. It is it is the the place of the point where the the tolerance level was reached. And it doesn't have to be like that. We do not have to move through the world with trying to manage ourselves so close to the edge where we are in any given moment, we can just jump over. The concept of disruption will serve us. Yes, it will. But it is just a tool like any other piece of information energetically that comes in. And it is how you relate and how you will perceive this piece of information. It could be a crossroads. It could be a fork in the road. It could be a question, an opportunity to pause and to breathe into what are my options here? What do I want? It is a question to give you a Pause so that you can course correct into the alignment that is most beneficial for you. It's not an escape. It's not for you planning your escape. It is for adjusting to work with the energy at the way that is most beneficial and in alignment with you. And, and to do that, you've got to give yourself a pause to harmonize, to really connect in with yourself and make different choices. It's as simple as that, my friends. So this is Bridget. Thank you so much for hanging in there and having this kind of deep conversation about disruption. Make sure you take some opportunity to write in your journal any of the segments of what I have explained to you today or chatted with you about today about disruption that may have come up or or offshoots of this conversation that you need to dig in more. Write them down in your journal and then take the time the next few days to go through the topics that are impacted 
by this for you or triggered you are triggered by. It might be a memory. Write it down and let it go. Give yourself permission to be open to the energy of the flow here. And what is showing up for you is exactly right. You are autonomous. You are in charge of your own healing journey. You are. You are in power here. So this is Bridget. I hope I've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope. Encourage you, as always, with all the work that I share here on Above Life channel on YouTube, or Bridget Inspired on Instagram, or Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. I hope I've inspired your spirit, filled you with hope, and encouraged you today to live your life. It's your life, after all, and you get to live it. So just live it. Thanks for listening.